you know, I always encourage people to download my videos, share my videos. I don't mind if you make money, like advertising, etc. That's not, not the problem for me. He says that, this is exactly his words, he said the Qur'an is an eternal person. Tell me one scholar in the history of Islam who said that. This is a lie. He says, the Qur'an is, a, it, it, you have to, it will come as a shafi'a on the day of judgment. So if, this is the question, I'll put it better for you, I'll help you, yeah? If the Qur'an is an attribute of God, how can it intercede for you? This is what he's saying, right? It's a good question. This is a good question. But it's not a proper understanding of the hadith. This is a, the only good question you had. I'll give it to you. This is the only good question you had. The, the hadith says, Iqra al-Qur'an. So it's not that the Qur'an, i.e. the attribute of Allah that will intercede for you on the day of judgment, but it is your qira'a of the Qur'an and the thawab that you get of the Qur'an, which means the reward you get from the recitation of the Qur'an, not the Qur'an as an attribute of Allah. Yeah. Now this is the hadith Hijab he mentioned trying to fool us because supposedly you do not know Arabic, my friend. You see, when they lie to you, and you, you debate them, you see that the, the problem is, I find in this debate that David Wood was not really, uh, he wasn't a debater, he was just there to read an article he wrote or he collect from the internet, and he delivered it. And then after that, it doesn't matter. That is not really a debate. This is why this guy, he looked like he is a person who made a victory. If you read with me carefully, it says, the messenger of Allah said, and this is a Sahih Hadith, recite the Quran for on the day of resurrection, it will come as an intercessor. He said that it's not the Quran will come to you. It is recite the Quran will intercede to you. But he says, you notice with the word will come. You see, when I say to you will come, that is a physical action. Who is coming? The Quran coming to who to the man who he will intercede to so he quote for you the first part of the hadith but he ignored the part where it says it will come now in order to understand more you see the Muslim they say to us don't misquote you have to uh, to read more in interpretation and explanation for the for the hadith okay let's do that and let us get you busted again this is Sahih Muslim this is a very Sahih hadith and your prophet is the one says it will come now how it will come let us see what Muhammad says more about this. Now this Abdul, he said that name for me, name for me, please, please, please. Uh, we, we, we Arab, we don't say please, we say please. Hmm? And we buy shampoo, not shampoo. And now Mr. James Bond of Islam, who is supposed to be Muslim, they think he is a hero, not only exposing the stupidity of Islam, exposing how false they are, because if they are of the true God, why you are lying? I mean, why you are not honest in the answer? He said that David would say, name for me one person in Islam said that Quran is eternal person or it is a person. He says that, this is exactly his words. He said the Quran is eternal person. Tell me one scholar in the history of Islam who said that. This is a lie. And he said the Quran will intercede for you. Recitation of the Quran, not the Quran itself will come. But the fact the one who said that is not a scholar. This is, he's a prophet. Unless he's a prophet is not a qualified to Mr. James Bond of Islam, the, uh, the, uh, <laughs> Muhammad Hijab, to be qualified to speak about who is the Quran. Uh, the Quran will come in on the day of resurrection like a peel man and will say, so who is the one will come? It is the Quran will come. He said, no, it's not the Quran will come. It's recitation of the Quran. You recite the Quran by reciting, by the recitation of your Quran, that will intercede to you in front of God because one day you were reciting, reciting the Quran. But this is a big fat lie. This is not what his prophet said, as you see. His prophet confirmed that because he was reciting the Quran one day, the Quran itself will come. The Quran will come in person. He said, who is the one who told you that the Quran is a person? And now if the Quran is not an eternal, how come the Quran is there in the judgment day? 
I am a person who, who was born at say 7,000 years ago and now I am coming to you after 7,000 years or let us say God, God knows when the judgment day will be maybe a million years from now the Quran will come to you as a person this means that this person is living person and he is X for all the time and he is witnessing for you and he will be there for you the same as God in the judgment day the liar he claimed that it is not the Quran will come as a person it is recitation of the Quran but the fact is a prophet saying not only the Quran will come but he will come as a peel man as if he's coming from the grave too with you and look what it says that I am the one the Quran will introduce himself to the man he will say to him I am the one who kept you away or awake sorry at night and made you thirsty during the day the, the, the Quran in order to do that he have to be multi-person it cannot be one person because how many Muslims there is According to Muslim today, they are 1.6 billion. I believe they are not even a, not even a 1 billion because they count everyone who live in Islamic countries as a Muslim, including me. They, they count all the Christians who live in the Middle East as Muslims. This is how they calculate the numbers. They calculate all the Christians who live in Indonesia as Muslims. So look what happened here. In order for the Quran to come as a peel man, and that will happen to every Muslim in the day of judgment day, then how many Quran will be and how many peel man will be? Are you getting my point? To make it simple, I will use a simple drawing for the for the Muslims because Muslims always they play slow. All right. So if we have this guy, his name is Muhammad, and this guy, his name is Ahmad, and this guy, his name his name is uh, uh, Mustafa, and this guy, his name is Abdul. Now the Quran or the, the Day of Judgment, all those people will stand up together, but the Quran will come to them in a shape of a peel man. That's mean each one of them, he will have with him a companion as a person, which is the Quran. He says that, this is exactly his words, he said the Qur'an is an eternal person. Tell me one scholar in the history of Islam who said that. This is a lie. This guy he will have a Qur'an as a peel man. This guy will have a Qur'an as a peel man. This guy will have a Qur'an as a peel man. This guy, the Qur'an, have a, is a peel man. How the Qur'an can be a multiple person and multiple men in the same time? That means we have equal men who they are the Qur'an, equal to mankind who they are Muslims. And yet this Abdul, he is lying to his teeth saying, Name for me one scholar says so. Let us continue getting you busted. He says that, this is exactly his words, he said the Quran is an eternal person. Tell me one scholar in the history of Islam who said that. This is a lie. He says the Quran is, a, 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 you have to, it will come as a Shafi'a on the Day of Judgment. So if, this is the question, I'll put it better for you, I'll help you, yeah? If the Quran is an attribute of God, how can it intercede for you? This is what he's saying, right? It's a good question. This is a good question. But it's not a proper understanding of the hadith. This is a, the only good question you had. I'll give it to you. This is the only good question you had. The, the hadith says, Iqra al Quran. So it's not that the Quran, i.e., the attribute of Allah that will intercede for you on the day of judgment, but it is your qira'ah of the Quran and the thawab that you get of the Quran, which means the reward you get from the recitation of the Quran, not the Quran as an attribute of Allah. Yeah. We continue getting this Abdul busted as we do all. This is his prophet, and he said to us, whoever say that, it's a lie, which means he is saying he's a prophet, is lying. I mean, that's amazing. Thank you very much for saying that. I was sitting with the prophet and I heard him say, who the prophet who the pro would mean the biggest the biggest abdul in the world unless uh, hijab don't consider the prophet someone to be considered and especially when he said whoever says that is a liar learn the chapter of al-baqarah because learning it is a blessing ignoring it is a sorrow and then he continues saying go down learn surah al-baqarah and al umran which means the chapter of the cow and the chapter of Al Amran. By the way, the name of Al Amran, supposedly, this is the last name of Musa's, which is a very funny, wrong mistake, historian mistake in the Quran. Same time, in case you do not know what Al Baqarah, Al Baqarah means the cow. And why it's called the cow? Because one day, Musa's, he asked his FBI department to investigate the death of a believer who was killed violently. So Allah told him, bring your brother some beef and shish kebab and bit him with him. Some Muslim scholars, they say it is, was the tail of the cow. Some of them, they say it's the tongue. And some, they say it was organs. It doesn't matter what it is. And this is why they call it the chapter of the cow. Because they beat the dead man to bring him to life. And supposedly the guy, he woke up for two seconds and he say, my name is Abdul and the one who killed me, his name is the Christian prince. And he died immediately. <laughs> Let us continue. So the Prophet is in, uh, uh, ordering the Muslim to learn, to learn those two chapters because they are lights and they shade their people in the day of resurrection, just like a cloud. Two spaces of shade or two lines of birds flying. The Quran, read carefully here with me. 
the Quran will meet it companion in a shape of a, fa a, 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 a pale faced man on the day of resurrection the Quran will meet the Quran will meet it's not your recitation will intercede to you as this guy liar he said where is the honesty in the answer I mean aren't you ashamed of lying people they will laugh at you now and thank you very much for saying a lie because nobody now will trust whatever you say you claim that you are a person who can you are the one who in the career of David David Wood my friend you ended your career as a scammer because you are scamming the Muslims, asking them for donations when you do not know what are you talking about and you are lying in the tongue of your prophet. Saying that the one who say that is a liar, which means you are accusing your prophet to be a liar. Whoever say, if the Quran is not a person and the Quran is not eternal, how the Quran is going to be exist in the judgment day when the Quran something been spoke at least a thousand and four hundred years ago. And remember, Allah, he wrote his book before even he created Adam. So the Quran's existence have nothing to do with Muhammad, which means it is very long time ago exist and it's not created. So here we go. We have a book. It's not created. Or let's say not a book. Sorry. The words of Allah, which is the Quran, because it doesn't matter if it's a book or not. This is what something later happened. So the Quran is not created. The Quran is coming to you as a person. The Quran is a man. And then the Quran is a talking individual. Read carefully with me again. And then when the Quran come to you in a shape of a pale faced man the Quran will ask him in order for the Quran to ask again to ask you questions the Quran must be a person who is talking there when the Quran is talking the Quran is bringing his words from where when the Quran is asking me a question that's mean the Quran he have a brain he have a thinking mind how the Quran ask me questions unless he is an individual person and as you see he is coming as a shape of a man perfect man in the same time the Quran is a talking Quran he talk it's not only a recitation happened a thousand and four hundred years ago it is a talking person who will speak in the day of judgment and the Quran will ask you a very important questions do you know me do you know me and let me ask you a question why I'm supposed to know you why I'm supposed to know you mr. Quran the man will say which means the man in the grave the one who just came from the grave I do not know you the Quran will say I am your companion that's mean the Quran proven to be eternal because here we go the guy is dead but this is the campaign of the Quran and he is a man with him in the grave actually this is why the Quran here says peel faced man why he is peel faced man because this is the companion of the dead body which is the Quran which is a person which mean there's a billions of Quran how many people who they are Muslims they die already since the time of Islam until now if now we have 1.4 billion let us make the Muslims happy three billions Hmm. trust me in two weeks from now they will say they are four billions and every one of them he have a companion which is a peeled man and he is going to ask him the same questions is that a bacteria Quran spread all over or those are individual Quran each one of them is independent Muhammad he says stories which is stupid and then the Muslims they have to live the dilemma of those stupid stories and now in order to defend Islam they have no choice but to lie and they say we don't have such a thing no you do you do and you are a liar you said whoever say that he is a liar when the fact you are the liar and you're your prophet saying that and you are accusing your prophet to be a liar let us continue getting them give you an example of how muslims they lie when they translate the hadith as an example the hate in the front of us which is a hassan sahih which means it is hassan and correct look what the hadith says in the translation they said that the prophet said the one who memorized the quran shall come on the day of judgment when you read this you think okay who is the one who will come in the judgment day the man sound like it the one who memorized the Quran shall come on the day of judgment but this is not what the hadith saying the hadith in Arabic saying the following and those who speak Arabic from the Muslims I challenge you to say I'm lying I challenge you actually you can copy this hadith and post it in Google translation right now and you will see this is what it's meant it says the Quran will come in the judgment day so the Quran would come as a person but why we don't see that in the English translation this is why you have to be careful when you read Muslim translation because this there is many many like hijab in the Islamic world here we go you tell me why the translator he did not translate accurately and say it is the Quran who will come but he make it as if it is the man he will come in the judgment day and the Quran will recite will will, will intercede for his recitation to get them busted more this is Ibn Kathir he says that this is exactly his words. He said the Quran is eternal person. Tell me one scholar in the history of Islam who said that. This is a lie. He says the Quran 
is uh, it, it, you have to, it will come as a Shafi'a on the Day of Judgment. So if, this is the question, I'll put it better for you, I'll help you, yeah? If the Qur'an is an attribute of God, how can it intercede for you? This is what he's saying, right? It's a good question. This is a good question. But it's not a proper understanding of the hadith. This is a, the only good question you had. I'll give it to you. This is the only good question you had. The, the hadith says, Iqra al-Qur'an. So it's not that the Qur'an, i.e. the attribute of Allah that will intercede for you on the Day of Judgment, but it is your qira'a of the Qur'an and the thawab that you get of the Qur'an, which means the reward you get from the recitation of the Qur'an, not the Qur'an as an attribute of Allah. This is another example of getting this Abdul liar busted. This is Islam QA or QA dot info, very Islamic website, Islam questions and answers as you see in the banner this is not a christian website this is not a hindu this is not a, 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 a jewish website this is your islamic website as it is and look what your website says abdul getting you busted question how sound is this hadith so there's a question about a hadith about the quran and about uh, the your good deeds will come to you all right what does that mean so now they are answering him and the title of the topic Good deeds appear in the form of a man in the grave. Do you see it? What is the good deed they are talking about? It is the Quran. If we go down here, we will see the following. It was narrated in the Sahih Sunnah. Sahih Sunnah. Focus with me. When you say in Arabic, for those who don't speak Arabic, Sahih mean authentic. Sunnah mean the teaching of the Prophet, what he practiced, what he said, etc. So about one good deeds, one's good deed talking a physical form, physical form. And appearing in the form of a handsome man in the grave. All right. Now, the scholars here, they start explaining to us what is correct and what is not correct. It was narrated. All what you see here is going to be considered sahih. See, it says sahih. Sahih. All of this, they are quoting for you only what is sahih about it. But this Abdul, he said to us, not even a single scholar believe in that when they are saying the opposite getting him busted this is why we cannot trust muslims when they debate about islam they don't debate they lie read with me carefully when they are in the grave those people in the grave then a voice will call from heaven a voice will call from heaven my slave has spoken the truth so prepare for him a bed from paradise and clothe him uh, uh, from uh, from paradise and open for him the gate of paradise there are come to him some of it is frequent and his grave is made wide as far as he can see then there is come to him a man with the handsome face a handsome cloth and good frequency and who say receive a glad tiding okay now who is this person this is the quran how we can confirm that this is the quran read carefully the Quran will meet its companion in the day of resurrection when its grave is opened for him in the form of a peel man. It will say to him, do you recognize me? He will say, I do not recognize you. He says, I am your companion, the Quran. And as you see, this is Sahih. They cannot say it's weak. They cannot say it's a fabricated. This is why my friend, when you speak to Muslims, you have to be careful. Muslims are not people who follow in a true God this is why they have no problem to lie in order to deceive they are allowed to deceive you in order to make you believe Islam is a true religion how this guy he said there's nobody believe in such a thing when as you see it's all over and it took me a lot of time by the way to find this article in our in English because for me as a person who speak Arabic I have no idea I mean I mean uh, 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 what those English I don't care for the English I care for what the Arabic says but for you because you need it in English I have to search for it for a while it took me a while to find it for me I read what it says in Arabic I do not need this garbage I will never read anything Muslims provide me in English because not even a single translation the Muslims they have is an accurate and correct and honest translation but because I have no choice but to show you what they say in English in order to prove my point. And as you see here, they are saying that this is Sahih. You will see, just look at the text down, down there, huh, under this video, and you will see how many Muslims, they will say, this hadith is weak. It is da'if. By the way, even da'if hadith in Islam is accepted. This is why we cannot trust those Abdul who they are comedian in the stage. They are scamming for just, you know, right away this guy, he made a video after not even 
a few hours after the debate asking the Muslim to pay him 50,000 pounds a month. 50,000 pounds a month, why? This guy, he wants to have a studio now. He brought you victory by lying. He brought you victory by deceiving. He brought you victory by fa false fiction. And he is accusing his prophet and making mockery of his prophet, saying that whoever believes in that is a liar. There's not a single person in the history of Islam says that the Quran is eternal person. And it's not the Quran will come to you. It's your recitation of the Quran will, 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 will intercede for you. What a shameful cult. You see, if you follow a liar, why you will not lie yourself? Your prophet is the best example to follow. The best example for us to follow is the Messiah, the Jesus, the Christ, the Lord of the Lord, the Lord of good, and the God who is good always, who never speaks sin, who never do sin, he never lie. That's why the Bible say, and the Muslims they say to us, that the Old Testament says God is not a man who lie. That is Jesus, my friend. When the Bible says that, that means men, they lie, but not Jesus. And that is your hijab lying in front of you. Claiming that Quran reading will intercede for you is not the Quran as a person will intercede for you, which is an absolute big fat lie. Listen, uh, they expose the lies of Muhammad and uh, learn how to be tough on this cult. And tough mean to be bold, to say it as it is, not as they want, not perfectly correct. Being perfectly, perfectly correct is an illness, is a weakness. If somebody is hiding something, even forced to say something. So if you are a Christian, say things as it is. Yes, we love the Muslims, but doesn't mean we will let the Muslim die and go to hell. Loving the Muslims is saving the Muslims. It's not the opposite. So when somebody, he says to you, uh, that you are being rude, this is not how a Christian should be speaking. A true Christian is the one who say things as it is, and that will make it truth for sure.